missing in a lot of answers is the point that the fish is roughly neutrally buoyant. If it was 500 pounds of lead it wouldn't work. Fish mostly made of water like us. Many fish even have swim bladders that keep them exactly naturally buoyant at a particular depth. So while they are in the water they don't weigh anything. Out of the water is a different story, which is why fishermen always use a net to scoop fish into the boat. It would never work to lift a 500 pounds fish out to the water by the hook. Many poles have limits. You also don't fight the fish as hard as you can, you let him run, you fight a bit and tire him out. Most reels nowadays have drag systems so I can set my line to come out when the fish applies so much weight. I can basically make the fish pull an extra 50 pounds or so. What I want to know is how the fuck Leo Klustermans reeled in a 573 pounds marlin on 4 pounds line. Only 20 minutes fight too. I fought a 180 pounds mako for longer than that on 100 pounds test LMAO. The pole, line, and man aren't stronger than the fish in water. But they don't need to be because fishing isn't just hauling in the fish like with a winch. Instead the idea behind fishing is to place a hook in the fish's mouth from which a steady pressure is applied, something which the fish must fight against. The rod is like a big spring that absorbs pulls from the fish while keeping up pressure. Reels have an adjustable pressure at which they will automatically let out line, called, drag, which allows the fish to swim away for a bit without breaking the line. When the fish is caught it will try to fight its way free. By applying this steady resistance the fish can be caused to tire itself out and eventually be pulled close enough to be removed from the water in a hand net. So you see the strength of the pole or man isn't usually a significant factor because the fish isn't in a straight strength contest with the fisher. Also, even though I weigh 190 pounds, I can't pull on a rope for a full 190 pounds. Only if that rope were trying to hoist me straight up would it need to have a breaking strength over 190 pounds. I'm sure fish have a higher weight, pull force ratio than I do, but the principle is the same. As others have said, fishing isn't about beating the fish in terms of strength. It's about exhausting the fish and then making the most of every bit of force. Fish, generally, have lots of short-term energy, but quickly tire and build up metabolic BI products in muscle that take time to remove. Humans are much better at a sustained activity and much better at aerobic muscle use. So you let the fish run, then when it slows you start reeling, then you let it run, then you keep reeling. While reeling, you pull hard on the rod to bring the fish in close, then gently wind in the slack on the line, minimizing the force applied to the reel and making use of the strong and flexible rod. Do these metabolic BI products affect the taste of the meat? Is low-stress fish more desirable? The weight isn't as much of a factor as the power, speed the fish can generate. Fish are approximately neutrally buoyant, so they weigh basically nothing in the water. If the fish didn't move at all, would still feel the mass and have to overcome the drag of the water when pulling it in, but it would not be the same as 500 pounds being lifted out of the water. Most fighting fish are pure muscle, and when they swim and pull on the line, that is what is doing most of the bending of the fishing pole. Dot. Beyond that, most rods reels have devices built in to keep you from breaking the line or the rod. Most reels have a drag adjustment that is basically a clutch you can set to let the line pay out when a specific amount of force is pulled. This generally will help keep things from breaking as long as you don't run out of line. It's been said but it's all in the drag. Let the fish stay underwater and let them pull a while. It can be 10 minutes or it can be an hour. That's the fight. Once it's tired itself out, it's just like hauling a log out of the water. Grab it with a gaff hook and haul it in the boat. You'll need a hand or two for a monster fish. Dot. It better be something worth eating if you're going to gaff it though. Drag. It's basically one mechanical feature. People catch large fish on lines that break with almost comically low tension. If the line breaks at 20 pounds of pressure, the reel can be set to spool out if it hits 15 pounds. So you just have a constant 15 pound pressure on the fish until it's exhausted. That's less possible when the fish is able to circle around coral or other structure. The line will snap on coral 9R rocks. If that's the problem, like with a grouper, you have to haul them off the bottom with sheer power and leverage. 
There are mechanical devices that do it for you but it's less sporting. Drag keeps the line from snapping from sudden runs, but has little to do with tiring a fish. The bend in the road exerting constant pressure is what does that. Should be noted that if you go after the big fish on a boat, they use a special chair that you are strapped into. This is the answer. Yes everyone talking about physics of reeling in are correct but usually it's not 500 pounds fish versus 200 pounds man alone. You are attached to the ground with your feet, and have a lever in the fishing pole. The fish is pushing against water. A fish in the water doesn't weigh 500 pounds. One is fighting the strength of the fish more than the weight. The fish has nothing to push against but water. The man is standing on solid ground or a boat. In addition, poles for fish that big are set to allow line to play out with some resistance, and reeling in just raises that resistance. It's not like the fish is just pulling on a taut rope attached to the human. It takes a long time for the fish to tire itself out as the human reels it in. I think the answer you are probably looking for is in spear fishing. Dot. A diver that is attached to a fish via spear will have a very hard time if that fish is big enough and strong enough. I am speaking from experience having to cut line due to a bad shot on big tuna to prevent it drowning you is rare but does occur. They can quite easily pull a full-grown man down or along in the water once at a certain size. Friction. Energy fish puts out asterisk you water is not equal your energy output asterisk you ground. Alas you win eventually. The rod and line isn't expected to lift the 500 pounds fish completely out of the water. Like others have mentioned, the whole system, including reel, line, drag, is designed to tire the fish out. Imagine you're in a kayak and it's attached to the wharf by a long long piece of rubber band. You can paddle farther and farther away from the wharf, but will eventually tire out and the elastic rubber band will bring you back to the wharf no matter how far away you've paddled. I know this as ELI-5. But does VO2 max and the amount of available oxygen in water have anything to do with it? Sure. Some fish are certainly lazier than others. Winter fish that are just hanging out in the cold depths definitely don't fight as hard. But no one is thinking about those fish in terms of their VO2 max. Also in my experience pound for pound, a 10 pounds open water ocean fish fights way harder than a 10 pounds lake fish. A fishing rig is set up to provide maximum advantage to the human and disadvantage to the fish. I'm not good at writing a nice story, so here are some points. The flexible pole acts as a lever so the human can apply less force than the fish and tire it out. The spool lets line out so the line doesn't break or that the human can keep holding on when the force gets too strong. The line in the water causes drag which the fish needs to fight while swimming. The fish is usually hooked in the mouth, and when the line gets tightened it makes it difficult for the fish to swim with all its strength in an intended direction, other than directly to the human. Imagine trying to run when your head is being turned and held to the side constantly. You'll be exerting energy to try and straighten it out and use less for the run. It is much harder to pull a fish in when a tail is hooked. It's a reeling in technique, I believe. They make the fish swim towards. Then the line slacks, so reel in. Get it swimming towards again and again, and keep reeling in again and again, until it's finally close enough to lift out of the water by hand. Some people move towards the fish and reel in, then walk slowly backwards, then forward again and reel in etc. Gotta be careful so neither the line or rod snaps. Isn't it a lever action that allows less force on the end near to the fulcrum producing a greater force at the further end? In addition to what the others have said, the fish is trying to swim in water against you. If it was a 500 pounds bear able to push against solid ground, it would be a lot more force than a swimming fish. Snorkel fishing is a thing, and it puts you on an even playing field, leaving me to wonder how a 5 pounds fish can pull a 200 pounds human around so much. Imagine you're playing tug of war. If you're going against two boys or girls of your own weight, you'll still win if the other two have to swim. They have nothing to brace against. Just also want to add that the fish might weigh X amount but they aren't stones. They are buoyant, not just a dead weight. Also, I didn't see anyone mention but stuff in or KN water have less friction than stuff on land so you can pull an object 10 times your weight. 
that's how small tugboats pull big ones and how you can pull on a fish, that isnt resisting, that's five or more times your weight. Dot. My cousin 28Y was learning how to swim, we tied a rope around him and my father gave me, I was a trenager then, rope to pull him to pier if he starts drowning. I was like, he weighs more than I do and I am scrawny af, so he let me pull him and it's was really easy. So aside what everyone else said, it would be hard pulling 500 pounds cow over grass compared to pulling 500 pounds fish through water.